In this video, we'll talk about loops in P5.js. Loops are special control structures that allow code to be repeated with variations. Loops are great because they help us to automatically make patterns and interactions and actually give our code more complex behaviors without actually writing more code. In fact, using loops correctly can reduce lines of repetitive code and make code easier to read and manage. Like you can see in this example here, I'm getting extremely complex and interesting interactive behavior from just a few lines of code that use loops. For a little bit of an overview of how loops work and when to use them, let's look at a different example. So here, I've got a simple little sketch, and if we just work through our code here, I can see in setup, I'm making a 400 pixel square canvas. In my draw loop, I'm just setting the background to gray, the stroke to black, I'm drawing the body shape with a rounded rectangle, the face with a couple of ellipses and an arc. And finally, I've got 11 calls to the line function, which are drawing all of Cody's legs. Now, anytime I'm seeing this much repetition of similar code in P5, that's a clue that I could simplify. So what's helpful is to look for patterns in repetitions of code. So if I'm looking here, I can see that in each line, we've got the coordinates for the start point, and the coordinates for the end point. So with all these, I can see that each line is starting at 220 vertical, and it's going down to 240. So that means each line is 20 pixels long. I can also see that each line starts at the same X coordinate. And that makes sense because each line is vertical. And I can see that the X coordinates increase by 10 with each call to the line function. Now this makes sense to me because I can see that each of these legs is spaced probably about 10 pixels apart. So knowing some of those patterns is a key to helping simplify our code. And a logical first step towards simplifying would be to replace these static numbers with some variables. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna set these variables up right here in my draw block. I don't want these to be global variables. I want these to be local for now. So we'll make one called leg X. So this is the one that'll be identical for each line call and then increase by 10 on the next line. And we'll start that at 50. And let's make one for the leg Y. So this is the one that's going to always be 220. And we can make one for the spacing. So that's the amount that we're increasing the X coordinate by from one line to the next. Then finally, we'll make a length. And that'll be 20. So that's the 20 unit difference from the end point of the line vertically to the start point of the line vertically. So I can go ahead and plug these in. And remember that leg X is going to repeat. And then for our endpoint, I'm going to combine leg Y plus the length. So that line of code gives us the same exact result. And that's this vertical line here making the first leg. That's exactly what I'd expect. Let's go ahead and replace the second line with variables. Oops, now I can see uh, something's going a little bit wrong here. I'm no longer getting that second leg in its right place. And actually, when I think this through, that makes sense because I'm using the same set of variables for the second line function call as I am for the first, but I haven't made any changes to them. So let's make a line in between where I add to that leg X variable. So I'll say leg X equals leg X plus spacing. And now I can see that second line is back. Now I can make a Pretty good prediction here that if I swap out all of these static coordinates with my variables, I'll still need to do this intermediate step of adding the spacing to leg X to get things spaced horizontally correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste. And what we're gonna do is replace each of our line calls with the line call that has the variables and then the next line that is incrementing or adding to that X variable. Okay, so at this point, each leg is being drawn by the combination of two lines of code. And all the attributes of the legs, so the spacing, the length, are controlled by our variables. So we could make adjustments here. Maybe I want these legs to be longer. Let's say I want 40 pixels, so let's get longer. Maybe I'd like them spaced 20 pixels apart. Whoops, and I can see they're actually shooting past the body now. Let's maybe make that five. 
So the advantage to setting up my code like this with variables is that I now have some centralized control over the way that my legs work. Now, the downside, and you're probably noticing this already, is I've actually doubled the amount of code that I need to just draw these simple shapes. And that's not really simplifying. I've done this deliberately because now we're in a perfect place to convert what we have here into a loop. And again, a clue that I'm getting here is that literally all of these lines are exact duplicates of one another. We're not even changing static numbers anymore. All of our variables, all the operations that we're doing to them are exactly the same. So what I need to do is tell the computer, hey, just repeat these two lines 11 times or 100 times or 1,000 times. And so that's really the beauty of the loop is it gives us a lot of centralized control over complex behaviors that would otherwise take tons and tons of code to write out manually. So in the next video, we'll cover exactly how to convert what we have here into a loop.